الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه الطاهرين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نحن نزلنا ذكرا وإنا له لحافظون Respected organizers of today's function, the English unit of Indian Muslim Association, and my dear brothers and sisters. So I was talking that Quran is a very relevant subject, and uh, especially today because uh, month of Ramadan is ahead, and we are almost nearing month of Ramadan. So it is the right time to discuss about Quran. And also, you know, some of the other things, other issues we are hearing about Quran, so that's why also Quran is always a relevant subject. And today's subject is about a Quranic verse which says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Which means, verily it is we who have revealed this reminder and verily we are its protectors. So this is the subject of today and this shows that Quran is a protected book. And there are... Uh, so many other aspects of Quran which confirms its protection. Quran is not only a protected book, but it is the only book in the world which is fully protected and available in its original language and in original form among all the books which claim to be divine books. For example, there are three books, latest books other than Quran, which is considered as uh, a book of a divine book. Among them are Old Testament, Psalms of David, and New Testament or Injil, Zabur, Injil, and Torah. These are the books which claim to be divine books. But if you see, none of them are available in the original language of its revelation and original form. For example, one of the latest book, New Testament, if you see its language of its revelation when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was conveying this message, it was in Aramaic language. And many people, believers in Jesus Christ and also those who are following Christianity, among them also, many of them are not aware that it is communicated in Arama Aramaic language, but it was first written in Greek language. Greek language is not similar to Aramaic language. It is much different language than Aramaic language. Aramaic language is very similar to Arabic language. So you can see that none of the books are available in its original form, and also it is uh, not you know, preserved in its original form, or not available in its original form or original language of its revelation. Also, one of the important feature of Quran is that it's a living miracle. When any prophets came, they presented miracle. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he came, he presented miracle. Moses, he presented miracle. Because it was necessary. When they come to people and say, I am prophet, first thing they have to convince people that I am extraordinary. And they used to show miracles to them. And when people's attentions are grabbed, then they will convey the message. So Prophet Muhammad, if you see his history, never did this. He never showed any miracle to convey his message. His miracle was Quran, Quran himself, because he was not a literary person. And suddenly he started presenting verses of Quran, which is in a beautiful, attractive Arabic language. So it's a, it's a living miracle. And that language, Quran, and the Arabic language is still there. And it's considered as a living miracle because anyone who reads Quranic language and its style, he will be definitely impressed and see that it's an extraordinary kind of literature. And Allah Taala also presented it as a living miracle. And uh, Allah says in Quran, Laula unzila alayhi ayatun mir rabbi. It is about the disbelievers. Allah Taala say, they said, why are you not, why there are not miracles sent down to you from your Lord? This was the question asked to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by the people of his time, especially disbelievers. If you are a prophet, why there are no miracles? You are not, not bringing miracles like Moses did, like Jesus did. And Allah Taala answers their question and says, 
அவலம் யக்ஃபிஹிம் அன்னா அன்ஸல்னா அலைகல் கிதாப் இஸ் இட் நாட் சஃபிஷியன்ட் ஃபார் தேம் தட் வி ஹேவ் சென்ட் டவுன் டு யூ ஓ ப்ரோஃபிட் முஹம்மது ஸல்லல்லாஹு அலைஹி வஸல்லம் a book is it not sufficient to them this book itself is a miracle because if you see the background of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also allah tabaraka wa taala mentioned wa ma kunta tatlu min qablihi min kitabin previously you have you were never reciting verses from a book wala takhuthuhu bi yameeni nor you have transcribed with it your right hand means prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's back, background if you see he was not a literary person he was not interested in literature and he is a unlettered prophet he was not educated from our education he you can say instead of educa- uh, uneducated you can say he never had a former education and he was unlettered and he never wrote a book suddenly he is reciting beautiful verses quoting from a book that itself is a miracle so allah tabarak wa taala says you are not reciting previously any verses from the book and you have not written any book previously so when you are presenting this this itself is a miracle to them and allah tabarak wa taala mentions so many other things to confirm that it is a divine book one of the message allah tabarak wa taala says afala yatadabbarun alquran are you not pondering over quran walau kana min indi ghairi allah had it been from other than allah lawajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira you would have def- definitely find many discrepancies in it and this is also a big claim a book without discrepancy and uh, if you see there are so many books in the world and every author of the book he will edit that book one is in the second edition will be little bit different third edition will be different there are amendments and there are corrigenders and there are this kind of things but quran once revealed never amended never changed and no discrepancies and it's perfect so this is another proof that it is revealed from god himself and if you see historically there are so many other proofs as well in history there was a never dis- there was never a dispute among muslim community about quran being a protected book and this dispute is there for example if you see other books it's not one version sometimes it's hundreds of versions of the same book which claim to be divine books but there was never dispute about the protection of the quran and there is always one version of quran available from the day of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and quran's expression is very beautiful and even an ordinary person who knows little bit of arabic language like me and many of you can distinguish between quranic verses and other you know quotations of arabic language or even prophetic statements even hadith if a person is given three statement one from prophetic quotation prophetic prophetic statement from hadith one from arabic quotation and one from quran anyone who knows little bit of quran a little bit of arabic language can distinguish that which is quranic verse because its style is unique and also quran is the only book which is memorized by thousands of people in the world millions of people in the world and every society you can see millions of men women and children who have or in every society you will find thousands of people who have memorized committed quran its entirety to their memory among them are children among them are women among them are men and this is the unique feature of quran and quran thus is a protected book also it's a unique book quran says a beautiful statement about quran himself it says inna alladhina kafaru bi dhikri lamma ja'ahum these are the ones who rejected god's counsel when it came to them wa innahu la kitabun aziz although it is certainly a mighty book a powerful book this is a unique statement allah says that about the disbelievers that when book came to them they rejected it but mind you this is a powerful book kitabun aziz this is a unique illustration given in quran that it is not only protected book but a powerful book which protects you as well and again allah tbaraka wa taala says la ya'tihil batilu min bayni yadayhi wala min khalfihi 
falsehood may not enter into it from front or from back. It is the revelation. Tanzilum min Hakim in Hamid. It is a revelation that has been sent down to you from the most wise, the immensely prize worthy. So this again, a beautiful statement which confirms that this is a powerful book. It is not only a protected book, but it protects you as well. And uh, if there are people who are against it, falsehood, who are opposing it, then they cannot come to Quran from front and from back because it is revealed from God who is wise and who is prize worthy. So it says that Quran is not only a book which is protected, but a book which protects. It's a very powerful book, Kitabun Aziz. And uh, about this particular word, Kitabun Aziz, so many commentators have given their explanation. I have read a beautiful quotation in Tafhim al Quran, a, you know, the illustration of Quran written by a great scholar of the era, Maulana Maududi. And if you read in his Tafhim al Quran in Urdu language, it's more beautiful. I am presenting the translation of it. It says that a powerful book, an unchanging book, which cannot be defeated by tricks and cunning devices, which the worshippers of falsehood are employing against it. It has the power of truth in it. It has the power of true knowledge, the power of argument and reason, the power of eloquence and style, the power of divinity of God who sent it, and the power of the personality of the messenger who presented it. No one, therefore, can defeat it by falsehood and hollow propaganda. It's a clear message to all those who make a hollow propaganda against Quran that it's a powerful book. It cannot be defeated. And this kind of propaganda you can see every time. And sometimes by a very powerful people and by powerful you know, persons and powerful powers. And sometimes very non-entities. Like in this time, you can find a gentleman called Wasim Rizvi, who is a non-entity who's a criminal himself, and in order to get a cheap propaganda, he filed a PIL, Public Interest Litigation in Supreme Court of India, saying that one has to ban 26 verses of Quran. I don't want to talk much about it, but he is a non-entity. Okay, and he has many cases against him. So, you know, that is, uh, you know, and everybody condemned it, and Indian government also condemned it, and his own community and family also condemned it. So we did not have to talk much about it. But here, Quran, for every time, defended itself and says, Quran is a powerful book, and falsehood cannot approach it from front or back. So Quran is a powerful book. That's also a very important thing we have to know. And how Quran, Quran protects what? When, Quran, when I said Quran is not only a protected book, but also it protects. It protects what? It protects religion of Islam. Islam today is a kind of protected religions, means dogmas, beliefs, everything is clear and defined. And there are no difference of opinion. So because of Quran, because Quran protects, you know, the religion of Islam. And you have, you very much know that there are four sources of Islam. What are those four sources? One is Quran, second one is Hadith saying of Prophet Muhammad, and the third one is Ijma, which is consensus of ulama, and the fourth one is Qiyas, which is research. Among them, Quran is the number one and the strongest source. And as long as Quran is there, Ummah is united, and uh, you know there is a big protection to Muslim Ummah. And it, is, it has set the true path of understanding and action for Ummah. What should be your action? What is your plan? It is set clearly by Quran. And Quran also presents solution to every problem. Whenever you have a problem, you can turn to Quran and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find solutions in it. And this, that's why also Quran is a book which protects. And there are code of conduct for individual, family and society. To run anything, even in a small organization, there are COBC, Code of Business Conduct. Quran gives us code of business conduct to lead a good life in society, in family, and as an individual. So this is the one of the book which gives you code of conduct. Also, every issues which may need guidance at any time, Quran covers every aspect of it. 
Quran is a very relevant book. You can read it anytime and it gives solutions for, for the problems of every time. Thus, as long as Quran is there, you, Quran will protect you, Muslim community as well, and Deen of Islam as well. And today, if there are any problems in Muslim community, one of the prime reason is lack of understanding of Quran. And lack of understanding of Quran is the reason for any issues in the Muslim Ummah today. And this is also said by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yarfaw bihaadha al-kitaab aqwaman wa yadaw bihi akhirin. Which means Allah wa ta'ala elevated the status of many communities because of Quran. And whoever, whoever abandoned the Quran, Allah wa ta'ala abandoned them. So Allah Ma Iqbal, a great poet of time, he translated it in a beautiful Urdu couplet. He said, Wa zamane me muazziste musalma hokar, aur tum khor huwe tariqe Quran hokar. They were great people as Muslims because they had Quran with them. And when you abandoned the Quran, you also lost your status. So Quran is, if you, you know, lack understanding of Quran and practice of Quranic teachings, then there will be so many issues in Muslim society. Today, if there are, there are any misunderstandings in the Muslim community, the reason is they have not understood Quran properly. If there are perversions, if there are innovations, bid'ah, if there are extremism, if there are lack of action, if there, is, there are divisions among Muslim community, or any pitfall, shortcomings, and weaknesses of all sorts, one of the prime reasons is lack of understanding of Quran. So it is necessary that Muslim community should think about turning back towards Quran and upholding Quran and also you know, understanding Quran and making Quran the constitution of their daily life. And also, let me tell you the another some of the reasons why Quran is beautiful, Quran is from God, and Quran is a protected book. You can see every small expression mentioned in Quran is very, very minutely accurate. For example, I'm giving you this statement. In this statement, Allah Taala says, "Ma jala Allahu li rajulin min qalbaini fi jawfihi." That means. Generally, the message, the summary of the statement is, Allah has not created two hearts in one man. This is the summary of the statement. But Allah Taala puts in a, it's it in a most accurate manner. Allah Taala is not using the word nas, man, men, uh, and our people, but Allah Taala using particularly the word man. It says. Never God has endowed any man with two hearts in his body. So, ma jala Allahu li rajulin min qalbaini fi jawfi. Here the word used is rajul. Rajul means not people but man. But here Allah Taala is talking about people that there are no two hearts among you know human beings. About human beings, Allah Taala is talking. But here, what is mentioned here is. Allah Taala says here that it is uh, Allah Taala has not created two hearts in one body, which means here Allah Taala mentions man. Why it is mentioned as man? Because, for example, female when she is pregnant, you will find more than one heart in a pregnant woman's body. Okay, and if she is pregnant with one child, then she has two hearts. If she is pregnant with twins, then she has three hearts. If she is pregnant with three, then she has four hearts. So this is again a reality. That's why Allah Taala puts it in a most accurate manner and says, "Ma jala Allahu rajalim min qalbaini fi jawfi." Allah has not created two hearts in a man. Woman is excluded. So this statement is most accurate. Like that, you will find the minute accuracy. For you know, this instead of man, if Allah Taala has would have mentioned human beings. That's also still correct, but some people might have objected that how can Allah Taala use human beings when women, when they are pregnant, they have more than one heart in their body. I can see another accuracy. There is a lot of mention about Prophet Moses and Prophet Jesus in Quran, 
and whenever allah tabarak wa taala mentions about moses addressing people allah tabarak wa taala says wa id qala musa li qaumihi ya qaumi whenever musa says and when moses said to his people oh my people the style of address of moses was oh my people but jesus christ peace be upon him there is a mention about him in many places but nowhere he says my people but what jesus christ says peace be upon him isa alayhi salam says wa id qala isa ibn maryam ya bani israil he says the son of mary jesus said o children of israel instead of my people he says children of israel why because he again there is a perfect accuracy my people means whom who are my people or my community my father's community i am son of so and so person and his community is my community his family is my family but jesus christ peace be upon him is born without father so when he say my community some people may say it is wrong so this minute minute accuracy is also you can see is you know highlighted in quran and i would like to introduce this person keith elmore he is one of he was one of the famous embryologist in the world and uh, he is from canada and he died in 2019 recently and when he visited saudi arabia to the king fahad university in the department of embryology some of the saudi embryologists he presented him quran he said there are so many statements and verses in quran about embryonic development and when he read it he was really astonished and he said if this is written in quran in 7th century it is a matter of astonishment because in 7th century there were no devices to see what is how the how is the development of embryo inside a mother's womb and if it is written in quran definitely it is given such an accurate information is given by all knowing which is god then he embraced islam then not only embraced islam he became a good muslim and he added many quranic verses to many of his books one of the book is this one before we are born there are many quranic verses found in this book and many of the other books which are books of syllabus in mbb for medical students in many parts of the world so you know this again shows that the beautiful illustration about embryonic development again is the proof that this is a divine book again i will mention about the honey bee in honey bee there are three kinds of bees one is male bee which is in smaller number then is worker bee which is in larger number that is considered as a honey bee and which is female bee also queen bee which is also female bee and we know about all these details recently because even in 17th century when shakespeare was writing a book henry king henry 4 and uh, when i visited shakespeare's house in london near london this book was for display and in this book about honey bee it is written that honey bee it is written that king and its soldiers not queen and soldiers king and soldiers honey bee and the mother bee and the queen bee was considered as male and soldiers are also considered as male soldiers usually soldiers are male but it was illustrated and mentioned in quran with feminine gender thumma kuli fasluki if anyone knows arabic language when uh, feminine gender is used for anything the whole expression changes quran the expression mentioned in quran about honey bee is feminine so it shows again that quran if it mentions honey about honey bee when no one knew that the worker honey bee are female then again it shows that it is revealed from all knowing and it's a divine book and uh, now the important part of the quran is that it's a book of understanding and we should try to understand quran quran is a divine book and uh, it is beneficial to human beings only when it is understood and allah tbaraka wa taala says we have sent down in arabic language inna anzalnahu quranan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun we have sent it down as an arabic quran in order that you may learn wisdom or you may understand that is the purpose and today everyone knows that if communication if it is not communicated in the language of the addressees 
then there may be a lot of challenges in the communication and a lot of noise in that communication. This communication may finally be misunderstood and may turn to be inaccurate. So Allah Taala sent down every revelation in the language of the first addresses, and Quran is sent in Arabic language, the language of the first addresses, so that you understand. So we majority of us being non-Arabs, it is our responsibility to try to learn Arabic language, and if not, try to learn Quran by our language and try to understand it. And Quran emphasizes an understanding. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. And we, this is a book revealed to you, and it is a blessed book. Liyadabbaru ayatihi, so that you may ponder over its verses. Waliyatadakkara ulul albab, and so that the people of understanding would be reminded. So understanding and reminder is the purpose of Quran, and we have to go for it, and we have to understand it. That that is the purpose of Quran, and also it emphasizes and says. Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Why are you not pondering over Quran? Am ala kulubin akfaluha. Are there locks upon your hearts? So, Quran is a book of understanding. So, it is necessary that we have to strengthen our relationship by trying to understand Quran and trying to understand and follow the message of Quran. Month of Ramadan is coming and it is mentioned as. A month which, in which Quran is revealed, Shahru Ramadan, Alladi Unzil Afihil Quran. This is the verse, particularly when Allah Taala wa Taala mentions about Ramadan. The first introduction is, it is month of Quran, not month of fasting. Quran is not saying month of fasting, but Quran is introducing month of Ramadan as month of Quran. So when this month is coming, what we have to do is. Along with fasting, we have to rejuvenate and strengthen our relationship with Quran. And when I say understanding, it is not just learning and it is not knowing about Quran. Because I had an opportunity to meet two important people who had a great understanding of Quran. One is a translator of Quran in Finnish language, and he was expert in Arabic language. A man from Finland. And he knew everything about Islam, and particularly Quran. He knows everything and Arabic language in a perfect manner. And another man I met is this person, John Esposito, professor of Islamic studies in Georgetown University, USA. He is again one of the famous Islamic scholar today, and he has doctorate on Islam. He has written many books about Islam. But what is common factor among both of them? They are not Muslims. They have great understanding of Quran, great understanding of Islam. They know everything, but what is missing is guidance. So it's not just learning; it's not just knowing. It's believing. That's also important, which is it is a requisite for giving you guide. And Quran is a book of guidance. Dalik al Kitab. This is a book. La Raibafi. There is no doubt about it. Huda. There is no doubt in it. Huda lil mutaqin. And it gives guidance to those who are God conscious, taqwa, which is again very important. And month of Ramadan is all about taqwa to develop this God consciousness. And why God consciousness is required to understand Quran and to make it a book of hidayah for us, guidance for us. And what kind of attachment we should have in Quran? What kind of belief? That means our response towards Quran will is mentioned again. That Inna al Mu'minun al Ladina Ida Dukir Allah. Believers are those when Allah is mentioned to them, Wajilat Ulubuhum, their hearts become fearful. Wa Ida Tuliyat Alehim Ayatuhu, and when His verses are recited to them, Zadat Hum Imana, it increases their belief. Wa Ala Rabbihim Yatawakalun, and upon their Lord they rely. They believe in their Lords. So this is very much necessary that we should seek hidayah from God. For that, God consciousness is necessary, and along with God consciousness, we have to try to understand Quran. So, cut of the message today is it's a divine book, and it's a only protected book. And this book is not only protected, but it book protects protects you as well. And it's a powerful book, and it defends itself. And our responsibility is to understand Quran. And not blind understanding, 
but an understanding which gives us guidance and this should be our focus every time and particularly our preparation of month of ramadan jazakumullahu khairan jaza wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin thank you very much uh, sharfuddin sufi sahab for your talk and the amazing presentation especially highlighting some of the intricacies like uh, the address of isa alayhi salam to his subjects subjects as in of course the subjects of a nabi uh, rasul and then of course the story of the honey bee and again the, the minutest details a lot of aspects in the quran which uh, i'm i'm sure couldn't be uh, you know synthesized and presented in a 35 minutes presentation you did a one, wonderful job thank you so much we will be taking questions on this one uh, the floor is open for questions if anybody has any questions like i mentioned before you could have them typed in the comment box our volunteers will collect them and we will direct them to the speaker um meanwhile uh, let me just make one announcement um we have a, at at ima english unit we have a broadcast list or if in any way you'd like to connect with us we have a broadcast list a whatsapp number you could connect with us on that number can i ask somebody from the volunteers to put that number in the chat box or i'd do it myself let me also get some other and i'll paste the number myself uh a moment yes this is the number you could uh, send us a brief message like salam ima so that we identify you anybody who is based in kuwait uh, who is who speaks english and would like to come and join us or study quran study circle with us you could connect with us over here uh, friends countering the issue created by an obscure person doesn't warrant a response this web the purpose of this webinar certainly wasn't that as muslims we have a big responsibility at least of which is understanding quran so i urge all my uh, fellow brothers here um, especially the indian muslims who can speak english and who'd like to connect with us we connect uh, weekly or 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 twice a month and we study or revise a few verses from the holy quran uh, under the guidance of some experts okay i think uh, we have one question i have some other questions i'll begin with these there's a question how to respond to issues challenging the divine perfection of each and every ayah of the holy quran for example the recent petition in the supreme court which is demanding removal of the certain ayah from the holy quran uh, sharfuddin sahab you may take it thank you very much uh, musawwar abdul musawwar for this question uh, better to mention who questioned it so you know that's also you know just uh, important but it's not necessary you may take care of it next time if there are, the name is available then otherwise it's okay so first of all uh, for this objection especially was seem was this objection we need not have to give much importance as i told you it is condemned by the government condemned by bjp the bjp party itself and uh, condemned by shia community and condemned by his own family so his uh, interest was to get cheap propaganda so you need not have to get a uh, good response you know need not have to go no care much about it that is one of the best response and um, you know versus if you see there are 26 versus he has objected and he objects at the, the, that you know in some of the verses it is mentioned kill them kill all the unbelievers so quran is like a constitution for example take constitution of any country for example indian constitution and there are laws there are uh, criminal laws there are civil laws there are penal code what penal code of any country says kill for example and uh, not only it says but it's killed in india for example in nirbhaya case all five criminals were killed and criminal court says kill them if you quote out of the context this word kill them and say that indian constitution says kill them it it becomes very you know uh, you know not correct that you are quoting it out of context so quran is a book which has everything which has laws 
which has civil laws, which has criminal laws, which is like a constitution. And during various context, it has given certain instruction to establish peace and to establish immediate response for the problems. So if you read it with the context, then you will understand everything. So it is necessary that whenever people raise objections, we have to take out that verse, explain the context and explain to them, and then people will understand. Now, this is not a time to highlight in detail about all the objections. So uh, important thing is quoting out of context. If you see, you will get this kind of verses in every religious scriptures. What is Mahabharata? It is all about war. What is Bhagavad Gita? It is about Arjuna motivating, Krishna motivating Arjuna to go against war. And he is motivating, you kill them, you motivating them that you need not have to hesitate to fight against them. So if you quote out of context, then you have to say Bhagavad Gita is all about killing. Then it is, it is wrong. So quoting anything out of context and saying that there is a word kill, then it is wrong. Quran is not a irrelevant book. It's a relevant book. It's all about society. In society, for controlling people, you should have civil laws, criminal laws, and you should, uh, you know, sometimes need to go against oppressors and to kill them also. So these are the verses mentioned in context. And when the context is mentioned, definitely it will be clear. And whenever you get this kind of opportunity, it is a great opportunity to convey the message of you know, Islam. In every challenges, there are opportunities. We should consider this as an opportunity and a good opportunity to convey the message. Thank you very much. Second question. Abdul Musawir I'm sorry. I, I think know. my connection was a little unstable. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. good now. There's another question. Uh, how we can present message of Quran in plural societies? Uh, this is a, also a good question. Plural society means a society with uh, multicultural people, multilinguistic and multi-religious people. For example, uh, India is one of the plural society where people of all communities are living. And uh, one of the important uh, method of conveying the message of Quran is accepting that it's a plural society and uh, plurality also quran has uh, given much importance that plurality is there in the society so make friendship with them and uh, recently if you have seen that uh, one of the best method of dawa is masjid visits and uh, i have seen this on all gulf countries in kuwait those who visit masjid al kabir they are very much impressed. Those who go, are in Bahrain, when they visit Masjid Fatih al-Kabir, they are very much impressed. So in plural society, if there are masajid, and if there are these kind of centers, invite people from various communities and uh, present to them and be friendly with them and present to them the real message of Islam and give them Quran, you know, sometimes free Quran. And, uh, you know, when a lot of people have seen when they read Quran, Quran has a unique way of presenting message to them. And that's why it is necessary that we have to make friendship with them. And we have to, uh, you know, highlight the importance of pluralism. And also, in a friendly atmosphere, we have to convey the message. And we have to bring them to our mosque as well. And to tell them that Islam is all about harmony peace and uh, creating a beautiful society and the objective of islam is happiness if you see what is objective it's happiness man sarratu hasanatu one you know if uh, his good deeds are making him happy then he is a believer al mu'min hu man sarratu hasanat and who is a believer a believer is one if his good deeds makes him happy when he is, whenever he do his bad deed, he should feel unhappy. The objective of Islam is happiness. Present it. Then this is the message of, you know, beautiful method of conveying the message of uh, Quran in a plural society. Thank you very much. Right. Another question in my chat box. It says, if I want to learn Quran, what is the best way in Kuwait? Is there any Quran study circle going on? Like I mentioned, uh, Indian Muslim Association has numerous study circles in Kuwait. And one of them is in English, is what I have to say. Uh, 
Sharfuddin Sahib, if you would like to add anything, please go ahead. Thank you. And this is what, uh, you know, if Quran, uh, to learn Quran, there are a lot of opportunities in Kuwait or anywhere in the world. With the internet revolution and with the modern era of uh, uh, social media and availability of every uh, Quranic literature in internet, there are a lot of opportunities. Also, in uh, Kuwait, one of the best sources is IMA itself. IMA has online Quranic classes every week, every part of Kuwait also in many languages, particularly in Urdu and English, you can join IMA as well. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, there's a question where the questioner, uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to get their names because the volunteers are collecting and sending them over to me. Uh, the questioner says, sir, challenging the verses in the court, does it stand any chance? Is there any previous history happened with similar cases? Yes. In India, uh, I think he, he was about India. Question. There were previous cases, uh, this kind of cases, and it was rejected every time previously. And this time also, according to the lawyers uh, who presented this case, this will be rejected in the initial stage itself. So there is no chance. And also the government and the BJP itself has condemned it. And though they, they know the repercussions and they know very much that this is presented by a criminal. And for uh, public interest litigation, one of the first requisite is before going into the public interest, what is the subject of the litigation? The first thing what they do is they will scrutinize about the person who has entered it. So whether he is a criminal, whether he is a uh, bad intention, whether he is a bad background. And when they go for this, it will be rejected as well because Wasim Rizvi has a very bad reputation and bad background. So it will be rejected from the... So chances, high chances are that it will be rejected, you know, at the initial stage itself. Right. Uh, there is a question. Uh, the question is asks, who is Jasad in Quran? Uh, he spelled it J-A-S-A-D, Jasad. Who is Jasad? In Quran, yes. This is what the question is asking. I don't know, Jasad means body. Okay, right. so... Uh, so... You know, Jauf also mentioned in my presentation that is also about body. So I don't know who is Jasad. I don't know. It's not an individual. It is body. Body, right. Jasad. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question. During Ramadan, reading Quran is more rewarded or reading Quran with meaning is more rewarded? See, reward, uh, there is no meter with me or anyone to measure the reward. So it's a difficult question. It's a wrong answer if I say that which is rewarded more. Because re about reward, Allah Taala says, "Innamal amalu binniyat." Reward is given based on your intention, and what is your intention? No one knows. You and your God knows about intention. So I cannot say in a simple statement which is more rewarding, but I can say which is more important. More important is not just reading, but reading with understanding. There is no book in the world which is read without understanding. For example, your mathematics books, if the science books, if the physics books, if you read it for Baraka, uh, you will not get anything from it. So Quran is also, of course, Quran is different. Quran, you will get Baraka, you will get Ajar, you will get Shifa, everything when you read it without understanding also. But the real benefit for which Quran is revealed, Quran is revealed, you know, if it is not for not only for Baraka, not only for Shifa, not only for Ajr, Quran is revealed to reform <clears throat> individuals and society, and this will happen only when you read and understand it. So this is more important. About Ajr, it all depends upon your intention. Allah may give you abundant Ajr for anything small you are doing. For example, you are reading Quran without meaning. May Allah Taala give more Ajr to you. And sometimes a person read, for example, John Esposito. He read and understood completely, but he did not make a Muslim. So can you expect Ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A layman who has a strong belief and who believes in Akhirah and he reads for Ajr. And you may expect more Ajr. So this is all possible. So Ajr, there is no meter. I don't have it. No one has it. So I cannot talk about Ajr, but definitely reading with meaning is very important. Right. I hope that answers the question. There are a few questions which I have received. Unfortunately, they are not connected uh, very much to our topic. Of course, they are connected to Islam. And uh, But since I'll just restrict myself to the topic, since we are running out of time, uh, the questioner asks, Quran interpretation by various scholars, sometimes as per their views and favor to their own cult 
and those go to tv debate and give their own perception how we can overcome such societal problems due to all due to that all of us mm-hmm. going going for tv debate for nominal fees uh, perhaps he's asking for your opinion uh, oh, yeah. sh- sh- shall i reread the question because it was a long question no no the question question is understood i think uh, the summary of the question is uh, that uh, which could be the best translation and interpretation we can refer to for our understanding uh, you can uh, refer to various interpretations which is available there is tafsir ibn kasir which is a very popular one of the a moment a moment sir a moment uh, the, the questioner asks quran interpretation mm-hmm. by various scholars sometimes as per their views and favor their own cult and those go for tv debates i think he's uh, he's referring to somebody in modern era uh people oh, okay. this is what i have understood yeah. I, i guess yeah, yeah, correct, correct yes, yes you know they say there are interpretations of quran and they want to interpret the verses of quran according to their understanding and according to their own cults and they want to develop their own cults so and some of the people who had their own cults like arun yahya for example in turkey he was recently ar- arrested and uh, he had his own cult and he popularized his own understanding of quran but when you go back to quran and want to refer it there are very popular world famous quranic interpretations many of the interpretations you can refer to and uh, if you are from arabic language you can refer to tafsir, tafsir ibn kasir tafsir jalalain and uh, so these kind of tafsir are oldest arabic tafsir and if in urdu language for example tafhim al quran and tadabbur quran these are the famous tafsirs of urdu language and this is uh, translation is available in english as well and in english also there are lot of tafsirs and abdullah yusuf ali's tafsir is a very simple tafsir and uh, not uh, you know much detailed tafsir so you can go to translation of urdu tafsir also it gives us lot of and fi zilal al quran is another beautiful tafsir which is available in most of the languages though it is written in arabic and it is available in most of the languages so i would say that instead of depending on one tafsir you can go for multiple tafsir and today is probably one of the best time we are living in all tafsir available in in app can you believe it fi zilal al quran is available in english app and urdu app the female quran is available in english app and urdu app so if you have a mobile you have whole tafsir in your pocket so this is advantage no one had our old ulama they traveled traveled thousands of kilometers and tried unbelievably hard work they did to learn tafsir from others and today you have easy one app and it's in your pocket our predecessors mashallah they have written tafsir and they have did lot of job and one it engineer can develop a app and it can help anybody so this is uh, you know advantage we have so you can learn from all these tafsir available in apps so uh, we with regard to the cult just ignore them there are a lot of them and today we have enough knowledge to uh, understand from the right sources so go to the right sources oh, we are almost running out of time but still i think we can take a couple of questions more um there is a question which says is reading with meaning enough is reading the quran with meaning enough or bringing into practice is the main purpose uh, it's uh, what what is enough you said is reading the quran with meaning ah, enough is perfect yes yeah yeah so you know quran uh, as i mentioned uh, to you and uh, you know it is important that you have to practice reading uh so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he did with quran when quranic revolution came based on the quranic revelation revelations a total revolution happened in society and new society was formed based on the quran and new individuals were formed based on the quran and uh, that's why just reading is not enough but we have to practice it prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he presented himself as a quran as a you know quran which can be practiced and when uh, his wife was asked a question how was the character of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam she said kana qulquhu al quran his personality and character was like quran so prophet muhammad was not a reader of quran 
but he was a you know person who practiced Quran. And if we say that we are the followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we cannot be just readers of Quran. We cannot be just readers of Baraka, uh, reading Quran for only Baraka only. But as the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who presented himself as the real example of Quran, we should become the not only persons who understand Quran, but who practice Quran, who read, understand, and practice. All three things are necessary so that Quran is really benefiting yourself and human society. Thank you.